has Eric Carlson played his last game in Teal? We're going to get caught up on all the Eric Carlson trade rumors, plus some potential bio candidates or why I think it's a terrible idea for the Sharks to buy anybody out this offseason. So all that and more on today's episode of Locked on Sharks. Your Locked on Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked On Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Locked On Sharks your first listen, probably a part of the Locked On Network, where we cover your team every day. And if you want to be an everydayer, all you got to do is just follow along wherever you get podcasts, or you can subscribe on YouTube as well. And today we're going to be kind of get caught up on all the Eric Carlson news that happened at the end of late, late last week um, and talk a little bit of buyouts today and why I think it's a dumb idea for the Sharks to buy anybody out this offseason uh, or kind of frankly the next couple seasons. So, um, but let's start with Eric Carlson. Of course, uh, it, it looks like we are finally both – Eric Carlson's camp and the Sharks, um, they met uh, at the Combine in Buffalo a couple weeks ago, and it seems like both are ready to kind of move on without each other. Um, Carlson is, you know, wants to, of course, try to win a cup before he retires. He just turned 33. Going to be winning a Norris Trophy here uh, next week, most likely. Um and I think the last thing he needs to do is get his name etched on the cup. That is to kind of fill out his Hall of Fame career. And uh, spoiler, the Sharks aren't winning the cup anytime soon. Um, you know, and it, it feels like this is kind of the right move for both teams. So um, want to kind of explore what teams make sense. Why? I mean, you know, kind of the thoughts and reasoning behind it for for the sharks and um let's start with carlson right who is coming off a what's going to be a norris winning uh campaign 101 points last season was the most dynamic player that we've seen in san jose or dynamic season we've seen in san jose in a long long time especially compared to what we have seen and the big thing it was a healthy season from eric carlson right he has struggled with injuries since his time in san jose um but he was healthy and he showed when he, it is his blue line, not having to share it with Brent Burns, um, what he can do despite the poor talent around him. And for the Sharks, right? Yes, this is the sell high, the all time sell high moment for Eric Carlson. And yes, he has four years left on his contract at $11.5 million with a full no movement clause. So that is something to keep in mind. Eric Carlson will have to approve waiving his uh, no trade clause. So, um, as I've jokingly said before, if you know, a GM like if the Maple Leafs say, hey, we'll give you five first round picks for Eric Carlson, and Eric Carlson's like, I don't want to go to Toronto, guess what? the trade's not going to happen type of situation. So it does seem like though Carlson, at least what we've heard from the media and stuff is pretty open-minded about getting this done. And it doesn't seem, it seems like he is going to um, work with the sharks. And I think it's going to be kind of a, one of those things where they, they work together to try to find kind of the best team um, slash best package for both. And, um, you know, we'll get into some of the potential teams here in a little bit, but it, it does feels like that we have, most likely seen um, Eric Carlson in in teal for the last time. So um, I think some some kind of important milestones to kind of keep in mind here is um, the draft, right? The draft is kind of the first kind of milestone of a potential trade. Um, we see a lot of players get traded during the draft, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, in that that first round, feels like the first kind of uh, of point where Eric Carlson could be potentially traded. Um, and then, so that is going to draft night, especially the first round, um, maybe the second beginning of the second round type of thing, but I, I or maybe be the night between, but I feel like the draft is your first main kind of uh, point of where Carlson could be, be potentially traded. Um, 
keep in mind July 1st is kind of when the, the calendar resets for the NHL. That's when the new, um, that's when free agency starts, but that that's when the calendar resets and that's when kind of everyone's cap book cleans up that day. Right. So you, you kind of, you do keep your, whoever's on your cap right now, you keep those through July 1st. So for example, like Timo Meyer is still technically on the Sharks cap right now, even if you go to cap friendly and they've, they've already moved ahead to the 23, 24 season, but one of those retention slots is already being held up by Timo Meyer, but will be coming off the books on July 1st. Friendly reminder for any trade uh, where the Sharks are going to have to retain, you can only retain three three contracts at a time. They already have Brent Burns on the books through the 24-25 season, um, and Timo Meyer's uh, $3 million will be coming off the books on July 1st. But the Sharks do have one more spot that they can use uh, as a retention um, between now and July 1st. Uh, if, if they wanted to facilitate a trade at the draft. So that that is, it'll be really weird where Monday he wins the Norris and then Wednesday he's traded to another team. It'd be really weird. And we haven't seen a, I think we've seen one defenseman and it was like in the sixties. Um, I can't recall who right now, um, who has been traded coming off a, a Norris season. Like this, this trade is going to be historic in a lot of ways whenever it happens. Uh, Shang's been doing a good job of kind of, uh, you know, writing articles on 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 that. He had had a good one over the weekend on on why it's going to be so historic, especially with probably what's going to all the you know non movement clauses and you know waiving those and trade retention and the length of the retention, all that fun stuff. So it's it's going to be interesting uh, there. The next is going to be you know after free agency starts, especially when teams caps open up a little bit and. You know, you you look around the league and you you see a lot of teams are still really really close to the cap going into the off season. Um, just as a reminder, you can go ten percent above the cap during the off season, um, and then as long as you are cap compliant, basically by opening night is kind of the rule. Is you just so you can go over the cap right now, but you do need to be cap compliant by opening night. And you know, the majority majority of teams are have less than 10 million dollars you know over half the league basically has 10 million dollars or less um of, of cap space going into this off season right now this the last year of the flat cap the cap's supposed to go up next year there's seen projections of about a, a jump from about four to five million dollars um going into next off you know next off season um and then hopefully you start to see a, an increasing normal cap um going neck forward so that maybe that helps facilitate things a little bit um knowing that like this is the one really last true year of of struggle when it comes to kind of this this cap crunch um but yeah so free agency is is kind of the next one and then if nothing happens by kind of the start of free agency i think it's going to be a lot like when carlson got traded to the sharks where it was mid-september right before training camp type of situation um where a team finally kind of is able to finagle it and figure things out type of situation um and and make the trade then so um and if none of those work, then I guess Eric Carlson is is going to start the season next on the Sharks, and maybe he's a trade deadline. Uh, he's traded the trade deadline where you're like, guess what? I just have half a season or less than half a season to go with Eric Carlson on my cap like this, and then we open up some cap space. Everybody opens up cap space that following off season type of, of situation. So, um, but it feels like both parties are want to kind of start the the process of getting moved on. It's, there's already been talks since dating back to last uh, uh, trade deadline. So um, I would expect Carlson is traded here probably with, again, this is just me guessing, but I would honestly, I'd expect that to the draft. That seems like the most likely place. There's already a bajillion transactions. You have everybody in the same building under the same roof. Um, you can kind of, you know, you've most likely already worked on a lot of the foundations uh for a lot of these trades um and then you can go from there so um before we try to talk about what teams make sense and try to figure out a trade um honestly i don't think I, it's we'll get to that in a minute um let's take a quick break talk to you guys about our friends uh over at ebay motors and you guys know a uh, for a championship team is all about making sure every player is a perfect fit and it's the same when it comes to your vehicle 
Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can make sure that your part uh, you need fits right the first time around. All you have to do is just add your car to the Maya Garage and look for the green check to know that the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game. And when you shop eBay Motors, you're going to bring home a win. With over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game at another time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win with the right parts are guaranteed. So get the right parts, the right price, and the right uh, fit on ebaymotors.com. So let's ride. eBay Guarantee Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Ultra items only. Exclusions apply. Let's start with what a potential trade would look like. And I honestly have no idea. I think it's too complicated. We have, we, we're we probably never going to see, we have not seen a trade like this before, especially with such a long term, so many complexities with it. Um, if a third team is going to be in, involved, what do they get for kind of eating some contract? Um, I think if the Sharks get a high pick back, whether it's a first or second round pick, um, you're going to, you should feel happy type of, of situation. And it just, it's probably going to come up to how much cap space are the sharks willing to eat for the next four seasons. And the more cap space they're willing to eat, um, the probably the better the return. And it sounds like they want to get Carlson down to like an eight, eight to $9 million player for whoever team takes them on. Um, so they're probably going to be looking at eating, you know, two and a half, three million dollars for the next four seasons, um, which honestly isn't that bad, especially once we we talk about their contract, their their cap situation going forward at the last segment. But um, I honest, I have no idea where to start with what's going on. Are the Sharks bringing back a bad contract to make the money match? Are they looking just for more future assets? Um, your guess is as good as mine. I, I honestly have no idea where to start to try to build a trade. Um, and I that's that's a struggle with it, right? Is what is a fair compensation for Eric Carlson? Because you look at the on-ice player, and if you get what you got last year, he's one of the greatest players in, in the league, right? Um, but you have to factor in the contract, the injury history he's had. He just turned 33. Um, is he going to perform better on a better team with better talent around him? Uh, where, you know, like there's so many factors going into this. And um, I do not envy Mike Greer because no matter what he gets back, people are going to say either that's dumb or he didn't get enough or he got too much. Like, no matter what he does here, he's kind of in a, a no win situation, you know, like, Oh, you only got back a you know, third round pick for a generational defenseman, Eric Carlson. And was like, yeah, you, you know, look at the contract, except look at the, Oh, you got a first round pick. Why didn't you get more? Like no matter what Mike Greer does here, he's, he's going to be in a tough situation. So, um, but let's look at some of the potential teams that are kind of floating around for this. Right. Um, you have the Edmonton Oilers who were really strong trying at the trade deadline. Of course, couldn't get anything done there. Um, make a lot of sense. I don't know if Carlson is the right player that they need. I feel like they need more of an actual like defensive defenseman because you have Connor McDavid and Dreisaitl. But I mean, off you know defenses for nerds go score a bunch of goals um, type of situation. Who knows? So they they kind of feel very much alive in this type of situation. Um, the Dallas stars are another team that's kind of, they, they have some bit of some cap issues here going into this off season. They only have $7 million with um, eight Fords. They'd probably have to maybe buy somebody out type of situation. Um, or maybe the sharks take back a, a bad contract from them, you know, type of thing. Like, who knows right there? Maybe it's, I know it's tough because like the, the contracts that you would point to where maybe the sharks would take them back to help ease some pain. Um, no movement clause like uh, Lindell is, you know, has a no movement clause. He's got two years left on his deal. Uh, Ryan Suter has got two years left on his deal, has a no movement clause as well. Um, so those are less, and I don't know if those guys would want to waive those to come to San Jose um, to come play on a bad team for the, the twilight of their career type of situation. Um, unless they buy those guys out, 
but I mean, they do have a little bit. Uh, they do have some. They don't have a first round pick this year, um, but they do have a second round pick, which is you know in, in the middle middle to late second round. Um, and then next year they have their the twenty twenty four draft. They have their first, second, and third, and they do have some some solid prospects. So maybe you could um, try to finesse a, a a prospect out of them. Um, you know, hope a guy who's going to be getting close to kind of making his NHL debut type of situation. So, um, but yeah, they have, they'd have some finagling to do with the cap space. So um, then you have your kind of usual guys, like the Red Wings who have a ton of cap space and are looking to make that jump from young frisky to potential, um, you know, potential playoff contenders. Same thing with the Sabres. Um, they do, the Sabres do have, you know, Owen Power and Rasmus Dahlin or Dahlin, Dalin or Dalin. Anyway, um, those guys who are, you know, Dalin has just got a new contract that's like $10 million apparently a year, uh, but he's very good. So is that going to, you know, kind of mess up the, 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 what you've got going there type of situation. But again, two teams who are young and frisky, ready to now start to be contenders type of situation. Um, a team like, the Panthers, right, who just lost in the Stanley Cup, they have no assets, but could they be, a, you know, trying to swing for the fences and knowing this is like it is copper bust type of, of situation going into next year? Um, they do have a 2023 second round pick this year, uh, but no first round picks for the next uh, three seasons, three drafts. Um, Maybe it's the second round this year and you take back a bad contract, but like their only bad contract right now is Bobrovsky, who has a no movement clause and just got you to the cup final. Are you trading Bobrovsky if you're the, 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 the Panthers right now and just saying, we're going to go with, um, you know, we're, we're going to go with Spencer Knight, who's been in the, the player assistance program. And, you know, he's only 22, but he's getting ready to start a three year, four and a half million dollar contract. And from what it sounds like, the, the Panthers want him to be back. And it's, it's all a, up to him type of situation if he's going to be ready for the season. But I don't think you can trade Bob Rofsky right now because he just, you know, I think proved like he was absolutely outstanding. And I think if the that whole rest versus rust debate where I think if, if the Panthers basically didn't have 10 days off between the mm -hmm. end of the Eastern conference finals and the beginning of the Stanley cup final, like I think that's a more competitive series, if that makes sense. Like I think they were on a roll and they were playing their best hockey and you wonder if the rest versus rust uh, debate kind of, kind of came in right there. But I mean, their cap situation, they're, they're tight against the, you know, I think they have about ten million dollars in cap space. Um, they don't have the assets really, and they they do have if they want to resign, debate if they want to sign Rico Gudis. Um, you know, because they only have four defensemen, uh, four defensemen under contract going into next season. Um, maybe you see if Aaron Ekblad, who's been really good, but has also been injury prone himself. Maybe it's you you trade Ekblad to the Sharks and again, but no movement clause. You trade Ekblad to the Sharks with the hope of like here here's at least a a capable defenseman for the next couple seasons. Who's by the time his contract's gonna be over, he's still less uh, under thirty. So you can kind of figure out what you want to do with there, hoping that you can upgrade that spot on Ekblad with with Eric Carlson and then kind of facilitate some players around him type of situation, especially if the Sharks eat some contract, um, then you're basically, maybe you're paying a million and a half, maybe like $2 million more, a uh, million and a half, $2 million more to go from Ekblad to Carlson for the next four seasons type of situation. But um, again, tough on the, they're really, really kind of struggling with the draft picks. Um, you know, like maybe their best prospect is Mackie Simisevich. Like it's yeah, so who knows? Again, and you know some of the other ones, right? Kind of the 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 Seattle Kraken, who do have plenty of cap space. Um, they don't really have. They have a lot of good defenders. Don't really have that one guy. And you know, kind of a team that a lot of people thought maybe overachieved last year, having a guy like Eric Carlson on there um, would really like 
legitimize this team and kind of especially what's really growing to be a very competitive Pacific. Um, you know, you think between the Kraken, the Kings, um, and then Edmonton and Vegas, that is, that's four like really, really competitive teams right there. So, you know, they might have to start getting into a, a bit of a bit, you know, kind of an arms race and adding Eric Carlson on the Kraken um, would, would help help them do that. So, um, so we'll continue to kind of follow along and see what happens with Carlson. Those are, you know, I think a trade, like I said, I think a trade does happen. Um, I think the draft makes a lot of sense, you know, especially again, you have a lot of people there. They're probably already working on who is getting, you know, type of situation, you know, kind of getting the, the foundation of the, the trade set up. And then it's probably going to be like a last call type of situation at the, at the draft. So um, before we look at, Sharks buyout candidates do want to thank you guys for making Locked on Sharks your first listen. Again, proudly a part of the Locked on Network. We cover your team every day. And if you want to be an everyday, all you got to do, just follow along wherever you get podcasts or you can watch on YouTube. Uh, we'll be back. We have our last three draft profiles uh, tomorrow. Ben Jordan joins to talk about Nate Danielson. Um, we also talk about Quentin Musty this week uh, with Brock Otten. And then Tony Ferrari uh, finishes him up with Mikhail Guliev. So, Three more draft profiles as we end up the, the draft profile season uh, with 29 of these bad boys, uh, 29 player specific episodes um, on the draft. So make sure you guys, again, just follow along wherever you get podcasts or you can watch on YouTube as well. All right, so we are officially in the uh, buyout window. We've already seen our first uh, victim, uh, OEL um and from vancouver who got bought out on friday and that one was uh brutal i think they're, they're paying them almost 20 million dollars uh to go away the canucks uh were over the cap uh, uh going into this off season had to cut some money um so they're they're getting a little bit of, of cap relief this season uh but yeah OEL will be on their books for a long time um <laughs> Yeah, I think he, he's on their books until uh, 30, 20, uh, yeah, 2031 uh, is when he will be on their, their cap until. So, man, that is a long. And poor Coyote. Poor Coyote is getting hit with the buyout, too. Weird situation. That, that stinks for the Coyotes, to be honest, that they lose one of their cap uh, retentions. They lose because the other team buys them out and they get hit with a retention uh, slot. So they lose one of the retention slots for the next eight seasons um, because of, of the Canucks buying out, um, buying uh, out Oliver Ekman Larson. So, um, but for the Sharks, I honestly think it's not a good idea for them to buy anyone out this offseason. I've heard, you know, the arguments, what about a guy like Cunning who's coming off a knee injury? Um, you know, had some bright spots, but didn't, you know, overall was kind of what you expected for him. Um, then you look at a guy like Oscar Lindblom, who was a, a disappointment, especially for the money they gave him at two and a half million dollars. You know, of course, there's a plastic argument. And I don't think it's a good idea to buy out anyone. And here's why the Sharks cap situation is about to become very clean much cleaner um so going into next off season um you're the sharks are projected to have again with a projection of the cap being at 87 and a half million dollars the sharks are projected to have almost 40 million dollars in cap space um next off season granted they're gonna need to sign some players because they'll have like four forwards four, you know for NHL forwards, and then you're going to have some some guys, maybe, uh, you know, Bordalo, you can count, like, he's going to need a new contract, but it's not going to be expensive type of situation. Like, you're going to have some, you know, um, it maybe if Bista is making his NHL debut, whatever, like, you're going to have some younger guy, like, younger, cheaper talent that you can facilitate around there, uh, whatever contracts they give out this year, you know, but none of, like, Jacob Peterson is projected to make, like, you know, a million and a half dollars. Fabian Zetterlin is predicted to make like under two million dollars. Like they're, you're going to have to some contracts in there, but the Sharks are they're going to have some money to play with going in the off season. And this is you're starting to see their cap situation clean up. Like it's been a struggle for them for the past couple seasons. 
And yes, you get some relief right now of getting rid of a guy, you know, like a whoever you want to, you know, a Limblom or a whomever, right? Whoever you want to try to get rid of. But like, why? You're not gonna. The Sharks are not gonna be good this year. Um, why? Why would you? Tr- why would you? send these guys away and most of these guys are on the last year of their contract with the exception of Vlasic like type of situation but you know look at like is is Lindblom playing fourth line minutes real at two and a half million dollars really hurting the team no he was a perfectly cromulent fourth liner last year he's just an overpaid fourth liner who cares um Luke Cunning, again Luke Cunning is a perfectly cromulent middle six guy um who's getting paid two and a half million dollars next year is he whatever like type of or 2.75 million dollars next year right and he's an rfa after that if you want to keep him then you can figure something out next off season. Or if you don't want to keep him, you don't have to sign them. You could trade his rights away just the same way um, the sharks traded for his rights. Um, or maybe at the draft, how or at the trade deadline, how often are teams looking for gritty guys who can score goals? What does that sound like to you? That sounds exactly like Luke Cunning, right? Luke Cunning is a perfect draft cap or trade deadline guy that you swing to another team um, as they try to, you know, and you retain half his salary as you try to, you know, and get an asset back. GMs love themselves. Luke guys like Luke Cunnins because he sticks up for his teammates and he can score goals. Uh, you know, that's, that's what he does. He, he scores goals and, and he fights dudes. So um, Luke Cunning is a perfectly but Blue Cunning is the perfect trade asset for Mike Greer this off season or this uh, coming season, you know, type of player. So um, again, I the Sharks are so close to getting out of, of of kind of this cap hell. It's not worth getting a little bit of cap relief this year when you're probably not going to be spending a bunch of money anyway in the off season. You're probably just going to be continuing to just add some guys who can help fill up the lineup while you wait for your young players to continue to develop. To me, it's not smart to try to kind of extend out some of this cap situation. I'd rather just continue to take my lumps this year, um, knowing next year you're going to have a much better cap situation. And even with Mark Edward Vlasic, right, his three years at $7 million, um, guess whose contract is is set to expire at the end of the 25-26 season? William Acklin. So you could basically just like kind of pencil in the money you've been paying Mark Edward Vlasic to William Acklin um, and give him a nice, you know, whatever it ends up being. We'll just say $7 million for eight seasons to William Acklin, who will at the time be 23. And that's going to take him through his prime years um, type of contract. That's what we're seeing a lot of teams doing. A lot of very smart teams doing just pay them the long term money as they're getting into their prime and then you're going to have a guy on a steal for the next seven, eight years. Um, and then you can kind of figure things out at the end of that contract. And we don't even know what the, the cap is going to look like seven, eight years from now anyway. So, um, so I would, again, I don't think it's worth buying out Mark Edward Vlasic. Um, is he an overpaid third pairing defenseman? Yes, of course he's an overpaid third, third pairing defenseman, but guess what? He was a, perfectly cromulent third pairing defenseman last year um, who played some of his best hockey that we've seen in the past three seasons under David Quinn. So um, I I would just, and you're probably going to have about eight and a half, you know, $8 million of free cap space coming here in about a week or two anyway. So um, again, it's not, it's, I think it's, I eat your lumps this year. And look forward to as the the team's cap page starts to get much cleaner here over the next couple seasons, right? I mean, next year on the books is Nico Sturm, Logan Couture, William Eklund, Thomas Hurdle as your forwards. Um, And then Bordelow or, you know, whoever else of the young guys are going to be on, um, you know, Zetterlin and probably Jacob Peterson. Like, none of those guys are going to be busting down the bank right now on, on contracts types of situations. And your defense... So a little bit murky or a little little tighter for the next couple seasons. Um, but you know, Shimmick, right? He's in the last year of his deal. 
if you need to bury him in the AHL, then bury him in the AHL, and you you get you save a million and a half dollar, or a mil, little over a million dollars uh, this off season. So, again, it's not worth the Sharks to try to get some cap relief now. They don't need it. Okay, just just continue to eat the lumps. Next year is going to be a much better off season for the Sharks when it comes to cap situations. So, um, that's going to do it for me uh, today. Like I said, be back tomorrow. Another draft profile, Nate Danielson with our friend Ben Jordan from Smart Scouting. Um, so, yeah, make sure you guys are following along wherever you get podcasts. And, of course, you can watch on YouTube as well. Um, you can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked on Sharks. You're definitely going to want to follow, especially the Instagram, um, because we're going to be in Nashville. And you're probably going to want to see some behind-the-scenes stuff. So make sure you guys are following along there. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at my fry hole. And, again, uh, be back tomorrow. And until then, bye, friends.